Welcome back to SiteTech Intermountain SiteWorks training videos. Hey, in this video, let's stake some boxes. I know this is one question that comes up a lot in trainings that I do or people that are just getting into doing a construction survey or staking is the best way to do certain things. Let's go ahead and use this storm drain system that I have on this project right here as my, um, my boxes that we want to stake. What you can do if this is a VCL file to clean up some of this other stuff that's in the way is go to this gear on the right side and if you have the layers option here, we can turn on and off a bunch of the layers. So I'm going to unselect them all and then I'm going to turn on just the uh, ponds and I'm going to turn on just my storm drain. Kind of clean the screen up a little bit. So now that I've gotten to this point, let's say I need to stake this box and they've asked me to stake the inside corners at a 5 and a 10 so they can orient to it. I don't know, everybody does this a little bit different, but I usually always stake the inside corners. Now, it depends on the type of data you've been given, but let's say you have a situation here where this box is one continuous line all the way around. I've got three different options here for you as to how to stake that correctly, and what I mean by that is how to get perfectly square. Because when you set a stake out here and you set a stake here and then another one behind for an alignment, they're trying to make sure that they're perfectly square with where these corners need to be inside or outside. So if you touch and hold on the inside box or corner of that, you're going to see that I've got one continuous round all the way around. So no matter where I go, my inward outward is going to tell me how far away I am. Quite a few different ways to do this. Let's start with each one of them. If you're on random, which is this option right here, and you need to stake five feet, you have the ability to leave that line where it's at and then simply move back until you see about five feet here on the inward. So it's kind of a game of getting as close as you can. Remember, you're averaging out satellites, horizontal and vertical. But this backward one at the top here is going to kind of help you with the scenario where you're not sure when you start to wrap around that corner. So if I go over and I start to go around the corner, you can see that that ahead is telling me that I'm three tenths too far that way. So you kind of have to watch both of those numbers, but I can run that down and move over until I get that two zero, and then I just need to go out a little bit further. So you can see that I'm a little bit beyond five feet and I'm a little bit around the corner because that number started to climb. That's one way to do it for each side of this box, because if I come over and you can see I'm a little bit too far to the right, I'm two tenths too far to go around the corner and I need to go out a little bit. This is one way to see as close as you can get it. I'm within two hundredths and within three there, so it's a game of just kind of clicking until you get there, right? But you're still, if you zoom down in, you still have that game right here of am I right at the corner? So that is one way to try to just eyeball the five feet off. The other option is to actually isolate this corner itself by going into the stakeout settings and isolating a line right on this end. This is actually the way that I used to do it. <clears throat> Not the always the right way or the wrong way, just personal preference. So if you go into your menu option here at the top left, you have an option in here called stake. If you go into stake, you can see where it'll allow you to pick whatever line. I'm going to stay on that inside corner, but there is four different options up here at the top right. This first one reverses the line string. You can see how every time I click that, it changes the arrow direction. The next one is the define new line. This one, you can come in here and you can click on the corner and you can click on that corner and isolate that edge right there. Now you can hit accept. Just leave it in the settings that it is there and come out. And now you can see that I've got an isolated corner to each side. So here's the thing that changes on your screen over here is it's understanding this as a stationing. There's a defined length to that line. So now the reason why it's flashing black and has a minus is it's showing that I'm a little bit too far off the edge of that line. Perfectly square to it, what I mean. So now it's still kind of the same game of getting your stationing here as close to zero and that off uh, inward if you're doing five feet as close as you can. So I'm going to click just a couple times. You can see I'm within two to three hundredths on the station, so I'm pretty well at the corner. 
and my outward is at 445. So I need to go a little further out until I get that to five or as close as possible. And then I'm going to make sure my stationing is okay. And right there, I'm as close to zero as I can. And I'm as close to five as I can. So I would drive a stake right there in the ground. And then I would put the cut fill on there, which is obviously not 4195. This is the emulator being a little goofy. So what I would do for this other side, though, is if you zoom in, you'll notice that if I come to this end, the stationing does flash black when I go off the line. But you don't really know if it's a four foot box, five foot box. What I used to do is simply just hit my button for the menu, go to stake, and while I'm still on that same line, this is where I would reverse the line string. So I'd click that box, turn the arrows the opposite way, and I would just do an exact mirror image on the other side. I would get that stationing as close to zero as I can, meaning that's the very end of that line, and my, my inward outward, I'd get that as close to five as I can get it. And there I would just go a little bit closer and a little bit closer to the end of the line. So pretty dang close on that. That's how you isolate a corner or isolate a box, even if this is a building corner. That's kind of the second option to be able to stake those corners. And then you could just go back also if you needed to put an extra stake back here at 10 feet for the guys just so they had an alignment. You would just walk back till you're about 10 feet and then get your, uh, your stationing as close as you can. The other option that's in here, I'm going to kind of cancel everything out and go back to where I was, is if you're staking this line, I'm going to go back to staking the inside corner of this box, and it's you can see that it's back to where it's all the way around. There is the ability to blow that line out a little bit further to the size you need, and there's this gear right here, which is the stakeout line settings. You do have a horizontal offset option right here. So you could put five feet in there. And you got to pay attention to which way those arrows were going to make sure it's left or right. Um, if you want to have the tangent corners, you can leave this at yes or no and then hit OK. Now you can see that it blew out that line about five feet all the way around. This one's a little bit more challenging because you're not 100% sure. But I will tell you that those little white dots are those little tangent corners, which means that it told me that those corners came straight out. So I do have a spot right there. And all I got to do is shoot for zero on the inward outward. So this is another option to be able to make sure that you're five feet away from that box. And there's a dot right there. Everybody does a little bit different. Then you could go ahead and put a 10 feet if you had to blow it out a little bit further. And same thing. You've got the little dot right there to ensure that you're straight off of that corner, and now you can see that you're shooting for zero. The only reason I personally, when I did survey, stayed away from doing it this way is because sometimes I would forget what was actually typed in right here, so I'd constantly be going back and forth to make sure when I wrote it on the stake. Because if you just touch and hold on that line and walk out till you're 10 feet, when I'm trying to remember what I wrote on the stake, I knew that I was 10 feet away from the inside corner of that box at always or five feet, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing wrong with doing the uh, the option right here to just make that box bigger, just showing you the different options. One more option I'll show you, coming back to isolating that corner and also using the line settings, maybe being able to use both um, the line settings and isolating a corner. I'll go back into the menu, I will go to stake, and I will isolate the corners of that box. Again, like I did earlier, I'm gonna pick that corner. I'm going to pick that corner. I'm going to come out to the main screen. And if I'm in that same setting where I'm isolating that corner using the stationing, now you also can use this offset option at that point. So you could type five feet in right there, and it will push that line five feet out for you to where now you have an actual like point to go to. So here you're still trying to find the design stationing, making sure that your right is close to zero there and that you know that line was pushed out five feet, so you're shooting for zero there. And then if you needed to do one more, you could come in here and change that to 10 feet. I'm just throwing numbers out there. But this is the other option to use both. But the key, especially like if this was a freeway and this box had to go underneath um, a barrier wall or it was on a, a curb and gutter in a road that had to be very, very square to the road um, for the curb and gutter, 
you need to make sure that as you're staking this out, you're as square off of each corner or box as you can. It would be the same thing for a building corner for a building. And I will do that on another video also, get into the Kogo functions a little bit more. So hopefully this helped with uh, staking those. Um, the other thing you can do here at the end is if you've already written on all your stakes and then you go back to maybe your five foot one, we'll change this back to five. Um, what I would always do on one of these stakes is I would give them their corner here, but then I would also give them the flow line out if this was the, the pipe going out. So without moving my rover away from that point, I would go ahead and stake the line, which is the storm drain line itself. But what I would do here is I would make, I want to make sure that even though I'm staying on that hub, I have the known point right there. So what I'm going to do is go back to uh, fixed and I'm going to pick the very end of that line and I'm going to go, okay. So that's one way to get back on the line, or the other way is to go into your menu, go to stake, and reverse the direction of that arrow right there. So you go to here, and then simply go back into this fixed point, and just make sure that says zero. That's probably the cleanest way to make sure that the arrows are going that way, and that zero represents the very, very, very beginning of that line. Go ahead and hit OK. So now, while you're still sitting on that hub, you can write, that the flow line out is a cut or fill of whatever that number is on the same stake. So anyways, hopefully this helps a uh, uh, video on staking boxes and corners using the stake options. Uh, thank you for watching this from Site Tech Intermountain, SiteWorks training videos.